Welcome back to Morning Express. It's now 10 minutes after 7, time for us to get into the newsroom. I'll go straight to introducing the panel that we have this morning, and I'll start with my immediate left. We have Mwenda Kilemi, who's a lecturer at the University of Nairobi Communications Department. Great to have you. Thank you for having me. It's been me. a while since we had you around. It has. Karibu sana. Thanks. Uh, Clay Muganda, who's an editor with The Standard. Karibu. Thank you very much. And last but not least, we have Crispus Yankem, who is a communication consultant. Good to have you too, and welcome. Thanks, Mike. Okay. I thought it should be the, the other way around. Oh, you should be welcoming me <laughs> <Yeah>. back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because I was not around last week. But uh, good job. I was watching. But good to have you guys. And uh, let's start off, first of all, with, of course, what has been in the headlines for the last few days and is still on the headlines today. And this is to do with hate speech. And uh, maybe let me start with you, Crispus, in terms of uh, your comments on what has been going on so far. One of the questions we asked yesterday is whether the IG summoning uh, the legislators, uh, whether this time he, sh he should be taken seriously as to whether anything is going to be done. And it looks like um, at least there is a change or a difference in how he has acted by the fact that now we have eight MPs uh, who are behind bars and uh, they're there till Friday with no bail. Well, once again, thanks, Michael. And uh, I don't know, I think that is a serious indictment on the part of uh, the IG. But yesterday, obviously, it was a busy day for the journalists. I remember watching some of them doing pieces to camera uh, until very late. The commitment was obviously there, and they must be commended. Um, but the arrests, as far as I'm concerned, I think they are coming quite late in the day, because this is something that we should have seen a long time ago. You remember this is where we were in 2007, in 2008, and uh, the results are quite obvious. Um, to me, um, the Kenyan society or the leadership that we have at the moment reflects the society we live in. We should not actually be blaming the leaders, but we should be blaming ourselves because we vote for these guys. We know the kind of characters they are. Look at what is going on on social media. I think... Um, whatever the leaders are saying it is actually child play you only need to look at what uh, the ordinary kenyan is saying on the on, on social media and for me i think the real trigger for violence is actually on social media mm -hmm. but as far as the arrests are concerned um, i think it is time that you ask whether actually those leaders who were arrested yesterday spent the night mm -hmm. at the cells that is something for you to think about uh, well, well, according I to the reports we have, the actual they spent the, the nights at the cells. Are you saying they may it not have It could be spent? another Kapura Waiguru story. Okay. Let me Something come. To, <laughs> to think about. Mm. Yeah. All right. Mwenda Kilemi, in terms of uh, where we are today, looking at the progress that we have had, hate speech is not anything new to Kenya because uh, it's, it, I mean, we have uh, the likes of Moses Kuria. We even had several charges against him, but still mm. scot-free. Uh, your comments on how possibly we have covered this and uh, if there are areas that maybe we have not highlighted. Uh, I think we need to go to the real problem of the hate speech. As uh, my colleague just said, we have a problem and it's not the politicians alone, it's also the people. They, they are saying what the people want to hear. In fact, I, I, I read of a survey yesterday that one of the central leaders who has been talking the most about hate speech has actually gained popularity because of what he's talking about. Mm. So we, we have to appreciate that this is not just an issue about politicians, they are reflecting what's going on in the country. And we need to find out why this is the case. Uh, uh, why has the, the body formed to, to be cohesive, uh, to make a more cohesive nation not been able to achieve its goal? Uh, they have been complaining for the longest time that they don't have enough resources. Um, maybe we should look as to why they're not being funded the way they need to be funded. Mm -hmm. um, because if we cannot figure out the root problem, it's going to be somebody else. If it's not the eight that were presented yesterday, it'll be somebody else tomorrow. And also, we need to challenge our leaders more about how they defend the people who are being charged. Uh, we had the former VP say that um, innocent people had been arrested, yet uh, some of these people were making comments about uh, that were inciting violence. Mm. So, I mean, they're getting defense from the top and defense from the bottom, and they're getting uh, hammered by the media for doing what their leaders want them to do and what the people at the bottom want them to do. So okay. we need to look at that. All right, uh, Clay, um, we are told that our leaders are a reflection of our society and we've concentrated a lot on the leaders being arrested, but like um, uh, Crispus mentions, on social media, you can also tell that there's a lot of uh, undesirable conversation going on. Look at some of the hashtags and, you know, uh, what uh, comments are made there. Do we need to highlight 
that as well and ensure that we're actually cleaning up the whole society, not just our leaders. Actually, I think uh, Kenyan social media, that's where logic goes to die. If you want to kill logic, put it on Kenyan social media. Mm. Because if you look at some of, the, some of the comments actually people make, most of these people, they don't, um, they don't know some of the things that they write about. And uh, I, th I think we just throw words around and sometimes we inflame emotions or uh, we whip up emotions and we react so fast. Uh, we actually think with our fingers and that's why I keep on saying that that's where logic goes to die. Because um, I'll just give an example when you hear some of this, when you read some of the comments that some of these people make about a place like Kisumu. Oh, Kisumu is dying, Kisumu everybody is poor there, or oh, people are not uh, going to invest in Kisumu. Uh, uh, unfortunately, some of them actually have never gone past, past Kikopei, mm -hmm. you know. So they don't actually even know what actually goes on what in that town. Kisumu. Yeah, mm -hmm. because uh, people thought that Kisumu was actually going to die after 2000 and uh, 2000, uh, post election violence. Mm -hmm. Actually, to the contrary, the town has grown. There's so many people, I mean, like the number of hotels have increased, I mean, there the are very many investors. But you see, when you keep on, and sometimes you find that even so-called so-called invest so-called industrialists make comments that actually i mean they're supposed to be respected when you say like okay fine now investors are going to run away from kisumu if you hear that from one of the country's top industrialists and you actually wonder so i think uh, some of the comments on social media uh, they don't they're they not helping to. much okay and i think and i think that uh, it's it's a job of mainstream media mm -hmm. to set to set the, to the set record uh, the record straight mm -hmm. And uh, in the process of setting the record straight, I think we need to call out also, and uh, it's called NCIC, because I, I, it's not doing much at yeah. all, at all. It's not doing yeah. much at all, because definitely these people are supposed to be the leaders. Yes, we elect them, you see? And uh, definitely the people down there who are going to listen to them, we've seen some of the comments, people say like, okay, fine, when it comes between choosing the constitution and Raila, I'll choose, I'll choose Raila, because Raila is older than the constitution, you see? So some of these people, they believe the same way people believe what politicians from the other side say. Mm -hmm. The people also believe what, I mean, the leaders from the other side say. The people also believe exactly what uh, the opposition members say. And I think this is what we need to call out as a media. But the thing is, we can do that. And I think we are doing that. But everything gets lost in, there's so much noise. There is so much ignorance in this country, I think. Okay, to add to what Clay mm -hmm. is saying, uh, the problem with social media, a major one, is that there's no accountability. Mm -hmm. uh, I can wake up one day and write something really nasty about you, and nobody's going to hold me to account. And uh, you mentioned something uh, earlier when we were talking about defamation, mm -hmm. uh, about social media now being people being charged. Maybe that will change that. Also, maybe we need to start look at some form of even self-regulation. It doesn't have to be government regulation, but um, we have a problem where anybody can wake up one day and, as Claire said, make a statement that is completely infactual, but very damaging to a society, to a group, to a city, and get away with it. And so we need to look at how we can avoid that. Okay. I, I think it is time that uh, the law enforces the police and even the courts, the office of the director of public prosecutions, to think about how we can deal with uh, cybercrime. It is a question that is quite pregnant and we should now start dealing with it. But uh, talking about NCAC, perhaps we need to go back to the bas basics and ask ourselves, how is it set up? Was it set up to fail? Do we actually have the necessary laws that can enable it to fight um, uh, hate, hate speech? speech? Mm -hmm. And was it actually the very reason as to why NCAC was set up? You've seen um, the leadership of NCAC, with due respect to Francis Ole Caparo, backing always but you saw the kind of response that is coming from uh, some of the leaders. They know pretty well that NCAC doesn't have the teeth to, uh, to bite. Mm -hmm. And this is why you saw people like even uh, Gunjiri are daring Kaparo telling him, I won't come to you. If you want, you can come to me. Mm -hmm. You know the channels. You can go to parliament and do your thing there. But coming to you is something that um, uh, is not possible. So uh, going forward, the media now start, uh, ought to start asking those critical questions. Look at the NCAC, how it is structured, and the laws that are there. Is it time that we started even uh, uh, relooking at the laws that uh, established NCAC? The NCAC Act itself, 
as far as I'm concerned, in my humble opinion, it is not even sufficient for it to be able to, uh, to deal with hate speech. Number two, I don't know whether that was the primary responsibility or mandate of NCAC. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think NCAC ought to move beyond hate speech. Okay. You know, yeah, uh, Clay, it, is, it is actually a commission that is supposed to be dealing with cohesion, mm. and that is the root cause. Okay, uh, Clay, in terms of NCIC, have we defined fully what their responsibility is and possibly the bottlenecks that they have? Because, like now, the NCIC chair, uh, Francis Ole Caparo, has constantly said that one of the impediments in them actually bringing to book those who um, alleged hate speech mongers is the judicial system and the judiciary. No. The fact that they go to court and they're not able to, um, well, within no time they're out. But you see, when, I mean, when you take somebody to court and you don't have, you don't prosecute the case well, then definitely the judiciary... With not enough evidence yes, and all that. Yeah. Not, yeah, because that's what you say, you don't investigate. So the problem does not start at the judicial system, at the judiciary. It starts with the prosecution. How do you prosecute this case? Mm -hmm. And first of all, um, I think what we need to call out as a media is, what are all, what are the objectives of NCIC? All right. You see, mm. and then what is this thing that we call hate speech? Because nowadays anything passes as hate speech. Mm. You see, I mean that those inflammatory remarks and all that. But I, I think it is it is a, 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 it, it's a fallacy. It's wrong for NCIC to blame the judicial system, because how strong is the case they put forward? Mm. How strong is it that? Actually, they can Clay, if I may, it is not the mandate of NCAC to investigate. They don't do that. Actually, the police do. NCAC submits evidence to the police to carry through. Yeah, but uh, here is the case. See, here is the case where it's an IC, NCIC which is complaining. It is not actually blaming the police for not doing investigations. It is blaming the judiciary, the judiciary. for re releasing these guys or for not. Yeah, but I'm, that's why I'm talking about like it's. The judiciary is the, the last step you go to. So uh, it's the police and NCIC mm -hmm. actually are supposed to take forward a strong case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but to, in uh, my to, view, yeah. in my view, I think it is time we look at the laws. What actually constitutes hate speech? Because as far as I'm concerned, there is a very thin line between what constitutes hate speech and freedom of expression. And I think this is where we go wrong because every Kenyan will run to the Constitution and say that I have that freedom of expression. But actually, what are you talking about? I think it is time we address this matter. We look at the laws. Uh, do we actually have sufficient laws that uh, can uh, 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 tell somebody this, this is how far you are supposed to go? You see, that's where the problem is. Mm. Okay, um, maybe uh, if I come to you, Mwendakilemi, and the thing is, have we been very clear on defining? Is it clear what is hate speech? Um, I, I don't, I think it's pretty clear. I think it's pretty clear. What's what the difference between, because some of uh, our, our legislators would like to make us believe it's freedom of expression. Uh, no, but I if what you're uttering out can cause potential danger to another community, then it's hate speech. Uh, but you see that potential danger, who, who measures the potential danger? How? Because uh, what is potential danger to me may not be potential danger to you. For instance, if I say that somebody is stupid, somebody might decide to just walk away. Another person might decide that, that would any, I will would, not take that. Would anybody out. consider that hate speech? I think hate speech when you say that that community should not be where they, where they are. I think that's definitely hate speech. Uh, going back to the issue of, of uh, NCIC, I think if you want to know whether they, we're taking that organization seriously, we just have to look at the resources afforded to it. Uh, and it, they, they have been complaining. They have about... I think less than 10 police officers or something like that, something really ridiculous. Mm. And so if this is the kind of resources they're given, it's clear what we think of them and what we think the role they should play. In addition, it's not just that organization. We have that corruption organization. All, this, all these departments and all these government offices that we seem to value, but we don't give them the enough resources or given the capability to perform the way they should. Personally, I'm of the belief we don't even need these departments, if government work the way it should work, if the laws are followed, they should be followed. We wouldn't need to and be talking about hate speech. But, but you see, that's the problem uh, we have in this country: is that uh, we have proposals, we treat laws as proposals. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. We may follow them. We yeah. don't have to. Yeah. And that's why you find actually even an elected member of parliament saying that we make the laws, we can break them. You see. Yeah. So we, this, what we need to call out is actually is adherence to the law, and that's why yeah. that's why we, we actually uh, fall short. 
And then also if you look at uh, a body like NCIC, and it's so difficult to, to trust that it's going to be, to be fair, because first of all, the chairman of NCIC <laughs> was just the other day the chairman of uh, URP. You see, <laughs> so, yeah. so you see, so there's a lot of, because he still owes allegiance to, to, that, to the party, mm. definitely. So uh, there's a lot of mistrust. There's a lot of mistrust, and actually, it's going down to the it's going down to the people, and this is what actually we should not even be discussing. Actually, NIC, NCIC. I mean, what we should be talking about is how to how Kenyans can actually realize that, or how the people at the top can realize that the decisions are actually driving di uh, di uh, dividing this country right in the middle, mm. because there's a lot of discontent at, on the ground. It, I mean, is not, it, is not, it is not the leadership to realize that. It is we Kenyans. We ought to take that responsibility. We are approaching an election, and that is an opportunity. But we are making it clear. It's obvious with the strikes going on, with the riots, it's, it's obvious that people are not happy. I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. Like you, see, you see, what I was saying is we need to blame ourselves, not the leadership, because they reflect the society. How, how do we, what how do you are we, saying? What you are saying, uh, uh, Michael, mm -hmm. uh, moving forward, I think what you need to do is to ensure that hate speech is very expensive. We need to enforce the laws. We need to ensure, uh, to ensure that Chapter 6 of the Constitution is enforced as we approach the elections. We need to ask ourselves, do we actually now need to bar even those people who are uh, implicated in hate speech from contesting, whether it is the MC, whether, whether it is the MP position, whether it is the Senate or we, even the presidency? Because it is time we started now ensuring that our laws are working, our institutions are respected, if we don't do that, believe you me, this country will go down to the dogs. That's, that's what I'm telling you, that uh, you see, and by leadership I mean this, the executive, because this is something that you find people protesting in Nairobi, nobody gets shot. You find people protesting in Kisumu, somebody, I mean, people lose lives. Those people have relatives, they have relatives in the police force, they have relatives in the, I mean, these people feel the pain and they ask, keep on asking themselves, why are we being killed? That's what I'm talking about. Why are our people being killed? So the leadership, it has to come, this is the parental authority. And that's what we need to call, this is what we need to call out and tell them like, you are actually, these actions are actually dividing the country right down in the middle. Mm -hmm. You go to a place like the other day when uh, Mr. Dinga was in Nakuru, then people, the, if the leaders who come out and say like, we don't want you here, and you wonder like, okay, when you do that, this guy also has followers. Mm -hmm. you see, so this is how you're dividing people down right in the middle. Then you find you my brother, just a my minute, brother. just a minute. Then yeah. you find a place like mm -hmm. maybe where well, all those places where people are being shot and all that. I mean, the people actually we should fear for are because these people live with the police officers there. They know at the end of the day they actually say that is the guy who shot. That's a guy who shot us. And I've seen photos on social media, people identifying these cops, you, you see. So this, all these things are causing discontent everywhere because you're actually causing discontent among the people themselves mm -hmm. and among the people and the authorities. Okay, le le see, let me so come to Christmas. These are some of the things, these are some of the things that we actually need to call le le out le because, because what is happening now is all the, the, only, the only person who will not take sides here is the media. Because all you know, these you know, have, yeah. you know, you know, Clay said that it is time the leadership or politicians realized that they are dividing Kenyans. I refuse to agree with you. You know, it is time Kenyans realized that they are being used by politicians to advance their own agenda. Unless we Kenyans are enlightened by along those uh, lines by, by ourselves, you know, by to a politician, anything the that helps to advance their political <laughs> agenda. Will, will actually be pursued mm -hmm. at whatever cost. Remember what I said, that any politician, it is not actually the responsibility of the politician to ensure that your rights are met or your daily needs are met. It is their responsibility and their number one agenda is to ensure they are elected and but be re-elected. I, I disagree with Chris Wester because mm -hmm. when uh, these politicians go saying that uh, this is happening to our people, we need to defend them, they are saying that we are defending your interests and our interests do not go along with their interests. So they are making that claim. Yeah, you, That's don't, you, know, you, know, don't, you don't expect people yeah. from you know, you know Kibra, what you don't what expect people from Kibra yeah. to, ra to rush to parliament. They actually have a representative, yes. and that's their leader, that's the parental yes. authority. Yes. The parental so authority is here. Remember what I said here. On this particular show, sometimes back, I said it is foolhardy for the Kenyan people to even imagine that the political class do not talk to each other. You see, they do. 
they have a lot of businesses together. But you know, whatever they say on uh, political platforms, mm -hmm. the ordinary Kenyan takes it to heart. That's where the problem is. Because those fellas, at the end of the day, you'll see them engaging each other. Even yesterday in courts, didn't you see so Mudama talking to... I think then what we need to do is what, what the media needs to do is to tell these people that, okay, uh, is to say that, okay, fine, don't, don't elect anybody. Let yeah. them all go to parliament. I, and I, I disagree with Chris was being... I, I think, I think was that, that is a simplistic what way of looking at these matters. The people, the people are very responsible for who they elect. In terms of politicians respond to what people want to hear. And that's why we have one of the highest uh, turnout rates for MPs. Because if you don't say what they want to hear or do what they thought they needed you need to I do... I think you're you basically saying what I'm saying. The politicians say what Kenyans want to hear because they are advancing so short, their agenda. So in short, it what, is what, 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 you're, that. what you're saying is that the politicians are merely reflecting what we want to hear. Yes, yeah. exactly. And you see, by so doing, they advance their political agenda because they are telling you what you want to hear. They are telling you what you want to hear because so they how, need how do we highlight this, Crispus, if that's what you believe? How do we highlight this? Because it looks like a case of who's fooling who. Because at the end of the day, the politician, if what you're saying is true, is saying what Kenyans want to hear. But what Kenyans want to hear is for them again to be arrested because of this hate speech. Because they're dividing us right in the middle. The media has got the responsibility of educating Kenyans. And it have we not time done that? the media started calling the black of some of the politicians that we have. Is it time even to give them blackout? Maybe that is a question you guys need to consider at the moment. But in addition, in energy. addition, we need leaders who are more courageous. We need leaders who can stand up to the people and say, even though the majority of you think that we need to do this, I disagree. And you elected me to be a leader, to give you leadership institutions like this, and I will not do and that. To guide you. Yes. Yeah, because mm -hmm. that's, actually, the, that's a parental that's, authority. That's what we need. We need yeah. proper leaders. Not we don't need people so who what, are just what, going to... So what bedevils us here? Is it the leaders that we have, or is it the people that have put the leaders there? No, I, I think it's... A, it's, a, it's Sounds like it's a catch Clay doesn't. Yeah. It's a cocktail. <laughs> it's a cocktail of all of us. It's a cycle. Yeah. It's a cycle. Yeah. Yeah. No. They don't want to be honest on this matter. No. Okay, because you see... Le it's very simple. These guys, you elect them. And I'm very sure you get elected and then you'll start actually telling the people what they want to hear. Yeah. You see, so it, it's, yeah. it's very good. It's very easy to quantificate. Yes. Mm. But you see, when you get up there, I don't know how these guys get to parliament and then they lose their mind completely. Yeah. I don't know whether it's... Um, um, okay, too much maybe then that's that where we need to come into <laughs> the media and highlight and remind the people that this, something happens. But let's go back to the issue of accountability because you mentioned, uh, like now, the incidences we have in Kisumu mm -hmm. where we have people killed. Uh, remember, we had uh, Manono not too long ago mm -hmm. uh, who was literally beat up right in front of cameras and there was a lot of hue and cry at that time. Uh, regarding that police officer but after that happened we've swiftly moved on and nobody knows what happened to that police officer if anything was done at all uh, you've mentioned that on social media we have police officers who've been highlighted as the ones who possibly may have shot do we have a responsibility to ensure that the law is even followed in that regard so that police officers like those do not get away with murder as it were yeah, because what, what is happening is that actually some of these police officers, like in areas where they shot people, they actually got transferred because they cannot leave there. But you see, you're how does that but, escape but, 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 you see, you but you see, you're transferring one officer who probably fired that fatal shot, but you're leaving 10 others there. And these people, they live with the community. They live with these people. Mm. Some of them actually in, uh, in places like Siaya, they drink in those places. These people know them. So you've already put their, their life in danger, you see. Some of them have been transferred. So, and then, I mean, it is, what you're doing now is actually you're fostering hatred over a very, a very, a very long period of time. That four-year-old child, do you, want, do you want to tell me that boy will actually grow up lo loving the government or loving the police? Mm -hmm. The four-year-old boy. Mm -hmm. You've already actually uh, uh, put a seed, sowed a seed of hatred in that child. So I think that our, we, what we need to do is actually, as a media, we need to call out these things and tell them, like, I mean, this is not the way to run a country. Mm. Because All actually, right. the only sober voice here now is the media. Everybody uh, and seems it seems to, to be, be sometimes sucked in. I know but sometimes is it, the, the, is the it issue really of the media? Uh, following the hottest story That's the only yeah. sober what voice now. But there are some vernacular radio stations that have been quite damaging the last few weeks. Like yesterday, so, yeah, like yesterday so what was going on on uh, Kamema FM, so that media. we are raising funds to pay for a matatu that was banned by laws. So the media, yeah. you, you, you cannot, you cannot so the blame not. the vernacular stations, blame the presenters, because but media. it is time the ethics of journalism 
is enforced. But they fall under the media category, even if it's just a reporter. Okay, okay, fine, fine. But I need to come back quickly to, to the question that you posed earlier on to um, uh, Clay, mm -hmm. uh, the Manono story. Do you know, I met somebody yesterday. The guy who died and, uh, and resurrected. And resurrected. The guy who was killed by the media and resurrected. No, you know, you know, not you know, by the media. <laughs> the media did the media their work to make sure the, the that media, social media... Actually, it is the media, it is the media who actually that, went that and, and, and resurrected him. Yeah. Okay, right. anyway, media. Yeah. Fine, fine, you win. Social media. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm saying is, I met somebody yesterday, and, and you, you see the kind of thing that I had. And this guy actually confided me in me and told me that now you're telling us what you're told in secret no, no, no. <laughs> okay <laughs> it wasn't in secret. I, I need actually to bring it up mm -hmm. for you to see the other side of the story the thing is manolo was actually um taunting this police officer daring him and telling it's, him it still that does you not guys justify not what important. happened to it doesn't him it doesn't it still does doesn't justify, justify. Mm -hmm. but you see when the demonstrators turn violent what do you expect the police to do? The police force in general. Are, as far as I agree with you, the sanctity of human life must be protected. Sometimes we also need to put ourselves in the shoes of the police officers. You know, you cannot deal with them all. But uh, just, so just like Clay has mentioned, as the media, we need to remain as a sober. We are actually the only in this conversation. Now. And in that this regard, if, if we go back to that Manono case, and even these police officers who may have shot, uh, or who shot, uh, you know, some people in Kisumu. We, we need to be the responsible media that makes sure that that is followed up. I think you've done it enough, but uh, the quarrel that I have with you guys is uh, on your reportage, especially yesterday, as far as uh, the arrests, the dramatic arrests. What was wrong? Of, uh, all the all we did was report was what was the happening. The thing is, you dwelt so much on the drama of it, you did not actually give us a lot of content. What is head speech? Why were they being arrested? You spoke of how the guy was hounded from, uh, I think how the guy was waylaid from uh, somewhere in National Center Studio mm -hmm. uh, all the way to Kiambu Road and uh, later on uh, uh, in the courts. So you did not even give us the context. You did not even go back to history. Some of those leaders, they have pending cases in court. I disagree, I disagree with that. you there yeah, because um, if you look at all the major dailies today, they have given a, a background as to why these people are working. I'm talking about what I saw on TV. So, uh, but I mean, <laughs> you, cannot, you cannot work <laughs> like that. In addition, how do we give history yeah. when they it's just happened? You, you cover the drama, then you give context. In addition, I, I, can, context. I can guarantee remind you, the, in the remind next coming few days, this context will be given that he wants. I mean, once an action happens, you first have to report on what has happened. Eventually, you start giving us background, start giving us analysis, but the context was given, and it's available. If let, you look let, at let's hear from Clay. Today. Clay sits on the desk, and he's an editor. Uh, Tell I, us, Clay. I, I think, uh, I think uh, yes, initially I'll, there was some confusion, mm -hmm. yeah? Like, oh, uh, at this least guy, you admit. just a minute, that this guy has been arrested. You see, that's how things come in. Mm -hmm. News come, it trickles in. Oh, first of all, it was like, uh, the person on the ground says he's been arrested, and then it turns out that actually he was not arrested. Uh, I mean, he actually got into his car, and uh, he was. Uh, they drove to to Kiambu Road. Yes. Yeah. But but you see, I don't think uh, at that particular moment uh, somebody remarked that uh, this MPs have drama. Actually, for me, what the, the poor have drama yesterday was uh, the government had a lot of drama. It was very dramatic for them because these guys were not these MPs. Nobody was a flight risk. Nobody was going to get out of this country there's so much money in parliament that actually they cannot run away from it so there was no point of putting up such kind of a show that oh let's wait for them here let's cause all this drama in arresting them i think that's what they yeah, are but, should, but, should I, but i think but i think mm -hmm. the whole thing is first of all the news came out it was reported as breaking news so and so has been arrested but later as more information was coming in like okay fine they've, they've gone to they've gone to Kiambu road I mean, they've been charged with this, they're in court. I think all the context has been given yeah. so far. Yeah. All the context. And as we go forward, uh, even, let me give an example, like what happened but in the US, what happened in the US, what happened the in the US the other day, this, uh, mm. the, mass, the mass shooting in, in Orlando. The, in first Orlando. of all, yeah. it was like people have been shot. So yeah. as they go forward now, they've discovered that actually this mm. guy had, uh, had links with uh, some of the ICC used it's to now, visit yes, gay, it's but now that you know, you're getting information, yeah, getting more, even visited the, the gay clubs really, that he might you know, be so gay. So all so, this, so yeah. as first, it has to break. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. 
It, we cannot do everything all at once. And if we did that, and then we forgot about I'm it, then again, you then again, it will, I mean, then again, it will be a problem. Like, mm. why is the media? And I'm media sure Christmas will probably come back and tell us, <coughs> look, you guys were giving us context when we are seeing what's happening. I, I tell us that, what yeah. is happening. So, <laughs> so, so I, I think, I think uh, we, we, we actually, we are actually doing a very good job right now. In that regard. Yeah. Okay, uh, I want us to move on to Save to for it. the presenters, as you call them, radio presenters. Yes, it's still a media house. But some of our presenters, some of the radio presenters, actually, they, speak, fr they speak from the mouth. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah they, they speak from the mouth just like... Of course, that goes then to the question, and we, I wish we had uh, a, a, a tutor here. Oh, we do have um, Mwanda Kilemi here in terms of the quality of journalists that we're churning out. And some of these presenters, are they really journalists? Or do we concentrate more maybe on how they look and how they articulate words? <laughs> but in terms of content, maybe there is nothing. M many of them are not. Many of them are not journalists. Many are just uh, people who happen to look a certain way, who talk a certain way, and who are figured would be good for, for ratings and would be good for their audience. So they don't have the, um, the knowledge on the ethics of reporting or the moral responsibility of a journalist. But, but they I don't think they, have they, they need to be guided. They do, yeah. but media houses need to decide who they pick and what qualifications they have when they pick them. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there are, many, there are many qualified people out there, many. I mean, I can give you at least 10 if you want right now, uh, but you guys have to decide that you want to collect them and you want to use them <laughs> in your stations. Uh, so far, you've not made the decision to do so. Okay. Yeah. Um, maybe moving on, and uh, I want us now to move on to something else, but f before we move on from there, have we, as the media, highlighted the fact that our political leaders seem very, for instance, we've not had the president say anything about hate speech. And some of those, of course, who are, have several cases against them belong to the Jubilee. That, that's exactly what I'm talking about, that actually this is where the parental authority, this, the, this, it's supposed to be, the president is the word of national unity. Mm -hmm. symbol that of is national the, unity. The symbol of national unity. Mm -hmm. That is where the parental authority is failing us. And that is where the parental authority actually is dividing the country right down in the middle. That is what I was talking and about. And I guess, uh, Crispus, then the question would be, do we have leaders in this country or do we just have politicians? Because politicians, like you mentioned, really uh, further their own agenda. Whereas leaders would be people who will take care of the agenda of the country. I think, uh, let me just quickly react to what he said. I, I, I think the problem that we have in this country is that we have laws, yet we want the presidency to address the law itself. Mm -hmm. You know, the presidency is not the law. We need to follow the law. It is as simple as that. But quickly to your question, I think, like I said earlier on, it is time Kenyans started asking themselves what kind of leadership they want as we approach the elections. Uh, I don't know, it is not upon me to decide whether we have uh, politicians or leaders, because there is a very thin line between politicians and leaders. It, it actually depends on the way you look at it, because there is political leadership, and uh, there is the other kind of leadership that you can think about. But I would so, imagine leadership points as whether political or whatever to responsible leadership. But we seem to be having people who are so uh, ingrained in uh, pushing their agenda that they don't care about the country. You know, politicians must push their agenda. That's why they are called politicians. So you cannot fault them on that. But it is upon Kenyans to ask themselves whether they want to install politicians in, in certain offices or they want to ensure that the responsible more, more, leaders... More like journalists and presenters. Yeah, true. Okay. <laughs> I, I think also uh, the electorate rewards certain types of... Uh, of characteristics mm -hmm. and so if the electorate was to reward leadership would see leadership but it does not do that our electorate does not reward a leader a leader many many courageous many great MPs have lost their seats because they did not do what the so people wanted leaders, responsible yes, leaders exactly <laughs> and over the last few months we have seen people who on both sides of Jubilee and court who we thought as very courageous very independent thinkers fall into line with their party and say things that you'd never imagine them saying just because they want to be in the good books of their parties. So actually, actually the, the only sober person here is the, the media. Yeah. And uh, this media is now being spoiled by... Well, according the to some people, they, they say that the media has also been sucked in and uh, possibly we also have corruption within journalists and uh, you have to be paid to cover a story. Yeah. I don't know but how Michael, that is, but let me hear from Chris first. Quickly, quickly, before I come to that, let me just respond to um, Mwenda's... Um, uh, 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 line of thought. I think I totally agree with him. Um, like when you look at uh, the leaders who were arrested, quote unquote, who were arrested yesterday, the, the things they were saying 
in the last one month, even the very reason as to why they were arrested. They had the audience there. Mm -hmm. The Kenyan populace was there, yes. cheering them on. When yeah. they say those kind of things, they were saying, and this is why it takes me back to my initial argument that the kind of leadership that we have in this country reflects the society. We deserve what we're getting. We deserve yeah. what we're getting. All right, let's move you on get to what something. You put in. Yeah. <laughs> let's move on to something else because I see time is moving. But uh, let's go to the impasse and uh, how far we have the coverage we've given. And in terms of, um, let me come to you, Mwenda, and in terms of uh, the information that we have and how far, whether we're making progress towards resolving the IEBC issues. I think the IEBC issue has completely been um, forgotten the last few days because of the issues of the hate speech. Um, there seems to be some impasse that there doesn't seem to be any goodwill in trying to figure out this problem. I, I think the political class in general is trying to push this back as far as possible to see when they can deal with it when they have to. And they don't feel that's the case right now. And all these distractions that are coming in, I hope they don't confuse us to not deal with the issue. The fact that you're talking about it now is great mm -hmm. because it's been forgotten. It's been forgotten. Has it really been forgotten? I think it's still in the papers today. And, uh, I think the issue, the issue of hate speech, the issue of the Supreme Court, but mainly the issue of the hate speech, mm -hmm. is what's really gathering storm right now in the country. And I, I hope that people don't forget the IBC because they are going to be one of the most important institutions that are going to help us fix this issue mm -hmm. and fight this whole idea of uh, ethnicity, uh, negative ethnicity. Okay. Uh, I think, I think the, the media did, has done it did on IEBC, give you uh, broken down the problem, the issues, given, the issues, the given, how you, to resolve given you, even, give, even <laughs> given you how much money they'll take, it will cost the taxpayer when yeah. they go. Yeah. Um, and this one, the media resolved it very, so right now what we're covering about IEBC are the side shows, you know, mm. yeah. but we are done with it. We, we give We've given all that needs everything to be. that actually can be said about IEBC. Mm. All their, all all their flaws, all their there. flaws, all the where issue they that the opposition and who everything has yeah, been okay. given about IEBC. So for IEBC as an institution, I think the media has done a wonderful job in either exposing them or just exposing giving the, the information, the information about yeah and Chris, plus plus agree? calculating how much money they're supposed to get. Even so to really, leave really, really. Yes. So yeah. I think right now yeah. what we're doing now is just covering. If we're the waiting side. for the political. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I totally agree uh, with Clay, and I wouldn't, for once. I wouldn't, not for once, we always <laughs> agree on this, on this particular show on certain matters that are very clear. Um, I totally agree, and I wouldn't like to belabor the point. But uh, moving forward, you asked whether there is an impasse. As far as I'm concerned, there isn't any pending issue. There is no impasse. The impasse was actually the creation of the media. What we had was a political standoff on IBC. But moving forward, I think uh, I have an issue, again, to pick with the media, because yesterday, one of the local dailies was talking about uh, Isaac Hassan being ready, and uh, the entire commission actually being ready to, to move on and mm -hmm. leave office. That story was there a long time ago, a month ago. Isaac Hassan said in front of cameras in a news conference that I had attended, that if there is a legal framework that guarantees us our dignity and ensures that uh, We'll get our pay and we'll not be hounded. But what is, what is you say in the paper yesterday is that actually he held another press conference. Mm. Yeah. No, yeah, yes, he held another, another no longer a story. Yeah, 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 he held another he press held conference. Another, he actually, he said the same thing. He said again. the same thing. Yes, yeah, so were we, were, we not, were we supposed to? Were, we were just so reporting what he said. So it was a story because yeah. the first time Isaac Hassan said that. So we so should have said it again. In terms of reportage of that particular, because this was now uh, in Mombasa, yes. where he was saying that this is how far we've gone with the negotiations, yes, and yes. my stand still remains the same. Are you saying we should have ignored that bit? I'm not saying that you should have ignored. Mm -hmm. the, actually, the headline was that Isaac Hassan ready to leave office. Yes, again, he is <laughs> C can I finish? Go ahead. Okay, okay, please let me finish. Finish. The thing is, what I'm saying is, it is no longer a story that Isaac Hassan and Tim mm -hmm. are ready to go because he said it clearly a month ago, but no media house picked that in that conference. Um, no media house. But moving forward, I think um, right now, like I said last week, the story of IBC no longer belongs in the streets. Whatever political standoff is still there mm -hmm. is a matter of semantics. 
having been in the kitchen and uh, with some benefits of knowing what is going on, I think now the focus of the media should be in parliament. The two motions, that, the motion that is supposed to be tabled in parliament, that's mm. what you're supposed to be focusing on. Yes. And tell yeah. us exactly what it means. Mm. How will they now exit? And at the timelines that uh, we have right now, is it possible, is it feasible for us to, uh, to have another um, new IBC that will conduct the election? Mm -hmm. Number two, is the secretariat affected? And I remember saying on this particular platform, that the media ought now to start telling us what is the role of the commissioners. I think, I think what this, is, this is what I was talking about. Because this is what, this thing IBC. has been broken down. Yeah. We actually, it has, it yeah. has, no, I we, agree. I, I remember but two, what I'm saying two, is, two or three step weeks on the gas. I think they're going around in circles. circles. They agree yeah. with yeah. you. Yeah. They agree two and disagree. Two, yeah. two or three <laughs> weeks ago, the senator on Sunday actually broke down this thing completely and talked about even the secretariat. You see, no, you know, Clay, mm, I yeah. totally agree with you. But what I'm saying is, we need to stay the cause on the IBC oh. story. Take it to Parliament. But you know, well you know you're, you're, you're shooting from both sides because <laughs> you, initially you said that uh, the story of Isaac Hassan is no longer a story. Because yeah, it's, being repeated, it because it's being repeated. No, whatever now you want us to repeat the, 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 the responsibilities of the commission and break down the secretariat, no. which has already been done. Come it's been, on, that wasn't done. No, it's been done, I'm that telling you. Done. I and I think even this, Unless I missed this, it. I think even this <laughs> week, this <laughs> week I think, uh, or rather last week, uh, the nation actually also broke it down about uh, the 200 million and all that. We, this is a story that I think the yeah. Sunday Standard I covered like three, yeah. three, okay. three, three Sundays uh, Let me ago. come to uh, you, Mwenda, and uh, in terms of, is, is that a story now that we need to just let be until and uh, Michael, they, they come up with a solution? Just briefly, before, before um, uh, Mwenda comes in, um, when I was going through uh, the local dailies, especially on Sunday, mm -hmm. the question of sources came up. And I remember reading some things in uh, uh, local doilies. Some of them were wrong, some of them, of course, were correct. Mm -hmm. It is very important going forward right now that we get our sources correctly. Mm -hmm. I think going forward... Any mm -hmm. journalist worth his or her soul must have correct sources. Talk to that watchman. Talk to that driver. They'll tell you the story, behind the story. Okay. I, I think moving forward, we need to um, look at how we can avoid some of the mistakes that have been made with the IABC. Mm -hmm. So I think it's up to the media to highlight that, you know, um, what are the issues. The issues they brought up that made this particular institution have the, the issues it's having right now, how can it be avoided going in the future? Mm -hmm. uh, they talk about, you know, reconstituting new, uh, new commissions and all these things. So let's see how we can advise as a media and give an opinion and, and give a direction that can help Kenyans and the people who are making those choices, make informed choices. Let's not forget the job of the media is to direct thinking. Uh, we may not have the power to actually change the law, but we can affect the people who change the laws. And, and, and put, uh, bring to account those yes. who possibly... So are not uh, let's not discount together. our power as opinion leaders. Mm -hmm. And so moving forward, we can really make sure that, that our voice is heard and that the right decisions are made so that this, what you're going through right now, is completely avoided in the future. Okay. Yeah, As we wind up... Um, we, we, uh, we can do that, but you see, again, I'll go back to this. The parental authority already dismissed, like, Yakufunganyama. You see, so... <laughs> but uh, that's not something that was taken too seriously. Yeah, Most people yeah. still believe in the newspaper. Most I, I know that. I know that. Uh, yeah. That one, I, I mean, that's why we are in business. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. As we wind up, uh, Crispus, in terms of now the judiciary, have we uh, covered everything that needs to be done, especially given that now we have Willie Mutunga retiring tomorrow, uh, hanging his boots, I think tomorrow is 16th, yes, tomorrow, and uh, possibly what we have faced as a country given uh, the challenges that we have? I think, like uh, I said earlier on, the media must be celebrated on this one, because yesterday... It took a lot of commitment for you to bring us the story that was happening at uh, uh, the Supreme Court. Um, I remember on Sunday I watched uh, the Mutunga exit, if you may, on KTN, and I think a lot of those things were covered. A lot of the stories that we wanted to hear uh, were covered. But uh, I'm very disappointed in the Supreme Court because uh, I thought yesterday's ruling was a cowardly act, if you may, Mutunga given the fact that his living office ought to leave behind an office which is intact for the better of his predecessor and uh, for the good of his own legacy. But going forward, I think uh, right now what we need to do, because uh, the ruling that was issued very late in the, in the night yesterday 
has not been broken down by the media. We don't know what exactly it means. But from the little that I've picked, I think this is why I'm saying it was a cowardly act. They needed to be very explicit. I think the constitution is very explicit. The judges must leave office at 70. There okay. isn't any yeah, I, I mean, that's why, that's why they were in court. Uh, that's why they went to court to, to, mm. to challenge that, yeah? Mm. And I think uh, uh, this one you can't fault the media because first I'm of all... I'm not faulting the media, my brother. What I'm saying is the Supreme Court ought to have given an explicit ruling on that matter because the Constitution is very clear. It is very clear. But now moving forward, I think uh, it is important even for the media to start now telling us picking the legacy because it is something that has not been deliberately done. Okay. Motunga's legacy. Mm -hmm. Number two, the other question, critical question, um, the achievements of the Supreme Court. I, th as th we I, th I, th I think you're too time. busy because actually this weekend, that is what all the papers dwelt That's on. All they did. That is what all the papers dwelt on. Yeah. Actually on the uh, Willy Mutunga's legacy. Yes. That is what all yeah. the papers dwelt on. I think and I saw a lot of opinion just, pieces. And just a minute, yes. And just what a, was there and was one a lot of thing, The judiciary pieces. itself actually bought space and uh, expressed all these things that... Never, but you cannot are, say the fact yeah. that the yeah. judiciary <coughs> bought space. You know, they are blowing their own trumpet. No, no, no. It I'm is just, us, us yes, the media, to interrogate. You see, you see, that's what I'm telling you, like, the judiciary bought space. But actually also, the, the, the issue about the Mutunga legacy, it's been broken down. I mean, we've explained all these things over the past two weeks because we were actually looking forward to this. We were anticipating, the, I mean, now. Uh, his retirement mm -hmm. and that's how we plan like okay fine let's do a story about this let's let's cover all the bases the about angles this. That I, 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 think, I think going back, to, your, going back yeah. to your original question um the 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 mutunga legacy has been covered in the media mm -hmm. and we have covered all the highs and lows uh, from uh, yeah. from uh, the, the possible the, pitfalls that yes have the disappointments in some rulings the the shock at the corruption um, and the successes in terms of opening up mini cons all over the country. Mm -hmm. um, so and being away with the wigs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so th these things have been covered. His legacy is, uh, is a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. And I mean, but li like everybody, you can't always have everything the way you wanted it to go. And the media have done a good job of highlighting that. Moving forward, maybe they need to talk about what needs to be done in the future to ensure that some of the pitfalls that were faced are avoided. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, going into an election year, we need to talk about what are the implications, being that the Supreme Court, the way it's constituted right now, and uh, what will that mean for any ruling that may happen in a potential uh, uh, election situation? Okay, a uh, potential uh, presidential um, petition and stuff. Petition yeah. like but actually, what we needed to highlight, actually, what actually probably we need to highlight now, is that uh, it was so odd that um, uh, the, the case about the retirement of judges took like, uh, the ruling took like nine, 10 hours, and uh, the petition about a presidential e election took like uh, 10 minutes, yeah. you know? <laughs> to, to get done. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. we'll have to wind it up right there because yeah. of time, gentlemen. <laughs> and, uh, well, on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, how would you give a performance of the media, just 1 to 10, uh, on those three subjects? And that is the judiciary, hate speech, and the impasse that has been going on. Excellent. Oh. Seven. <laughs> yes. okay. Of course, yes, we are good. I mean, I, I, I <laughs> you give it <laughs> ten. You know when, when, when you're too good, you don't even say excellent. You just say good. Okay. You know? <laughs> uh, let me one to ten. I'll give it an eight. There's an some eight. issues that need to be Okay, so it seems like the media yeah. is doing a good job, according to this gentleman here. I don't know if you have the same opinion at home or wherever you're watching from, but we'll have to wind it up right there. Thank you very much, Mwenda Kilemi, who's a lecturer at University of Nairobi Communications Department, Clay Muganda, editor with the Standard, and last but not least, Chris. Yankem, who's a communications expert. That's where we're going to wind up newsroom this morning. But do stay with us. We've got some news updates coming up. And later on, we'll be looking at your health right here on Morning Express. <laughs>